Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. So I just finished watching Bad Vegan. And for the ones of you who don't know the show, it's all over the news at the moment. It's about Sama Mangalas, who used to run a very successful raw vegan restaurant called Pure Food and Wine. And uh, she also had a, a, a raw vegan shop called One Lucky Duck. And she got involved with a guy called Anthony Strangers, who basically gaslit her, manipulated her, uh, psychologically abused her and conned her out of all her money and made her close down her restaurant and lose everything. Of course I wanted to watch this documentary because I want to watch anything that has to do with gaslighting. It, I feel like it helps me understand the topic better and this is just like, you know, the perfect gaslighting, psychological abuse story. However, after having watched it, I can't feel, I can't help but feel outraged. And I'm not feeling outraged by the story as such. I know it's a crazy story, but I feel outraged by the, the documentary and the lens that they used to portray the story. Because to me, it looks like there is a lot of blaming the gaslighting victim going on in the documentary and I'm not okay with that. And the problem is that that actually informs how people perceive Salma. If you check any reviews of, you know, and just general media, whatever <laughs> is being said online about Salma, there is very little to no sympathy towards Sama. And that is just outright wrong from my perspective. Because, and the reason for that really is that how, is of how Netflix and the documentary have decided to tell the story. The, the thing that baffles me the most is that in a documentary, about coercive control and psychological abuse. There was no psychologist involved. There was no one there to evaluate this situation, to help the audience understand what Salma went through. They could have asked anyone. They could have asked Dr. Armani. They could have asked Dr. Kirk. Honda, who, by the way, released a brilliant, brilliant podcast on this topic just recently. But no, instead, they had a lawyer, her former lawyer, um, a journalist, some friends, family, former employees, who, of course, were bitter because they weren't being paid. Um, it's, it's a very one-sided documentary and they make you feel like it's balanced, like they try and, and uncover the story, you know, they, they tell a bit of the backstory, etc. But really, it's not. Because if it was balanced, it would have a better psychological understanding of, as the audience, of what she went through. Even the fact they call the documentary Bad Vegan, it might be sensationalized and it might get them the views, but it already puts Sama as the villain. Just the, the title alone. We're already expecting for her to be the villain before we even watch it. And this documentary and this whole thing upsets me for several reasons. I feel like as a society, we don't understand gaslighting. Yes, there is a bit more awareness about it now than it used to be, which is great. However, it, it is in danger of becoming a buzzword. A thing people use too often and out of context, which basically resolves in it losing its meaning. People actually don't understand what it means to be gaslit. 
and they don't understand that it's something that happens over time and they don't understand that a person who is being gaslit, their reality is being shattered. They don't understand what is real, what is true, what is fake. This is the whole concept of, of gaslighting and nowhere, nowhere in the documentary has that been mentioned. I think that instead of blaming Sama, this documentary really should have focused much more on what a bad guy Anthony Stranges is. And that after psychologically abusing her for five years, gaslighting her, manipulating her, putting her under immense psychological pressure, taking all her money, taking her mom's money, making her close down her restaurant, he is walking free. He, he got one year in prison. How is that fair? It just tells me that our society doesn't understand psychological abuse and the emotional damage it can cause. If he would have, I don't know, hurt her physically, I'm sure he would have gotten much more time in prison. But as it is, you know, she is stupid for believing in his lies. How, how is that okay? That is not okay. Another problem I have with this documentary is that they focus, and I think that's the reason why people struggle to sympathize with Salma, is that they focus on this whole idea that she believes that her dog is going to become immortal and everything is going to be fine and you know and there is this like crazy reality that exists that she is a mere human is not aware of and he is just so much more than a human and um, I mean that alone is is you know just shows us what a psychopath he is <laughs> with these grandiose feelings that, you know, he's above everyone else and everyone owes him. Um, but yeah, so I think people just struggle to understand why she would fall for it. And this is exactly where the documentary falls short, because you need to understand how gaslighting works. It doesn't happen like this. It's not like they met you know, they went on a first date and immediately he was like, oh, by the way, I can make your dog immortal. She would have freaking sent him away. She would be like, you are mad. This is not how it works. Gaslighters break you bit by bit. It's small. It starts so minuscule. You don't even notice it. And what they do is they break your reality they start, they make you start questioning everything in your world. And from that perspective where you like, honestly, I don't even understand. I don't even know what is real anymore. This guy just makes me, you know, he just like puts everything upside down and inside out. And I'm just confused. Like they put you in the state of confusion where they can then start feeding their reality to you. And this is what happens to every single gaslighting victim. And this is just happens to be, you know, the thing that he latched onto is because he understands. And that's another thing that gaslighters and narcissists are really good at. They understand your insecurities and they understand what's dear to you and they understand what makes you tick. And they tell you exactly what you want to hear, at least in the beginning. You know, in the beginning, there is this whole love bombing process where you know, they put you up on a pedestal and they make you feel special. They make you feel like you're the best person in the world and you deserve everything. And of course, everyone wants to feel that way. If someone made you feel special, would you send them away? Probably not. The problem comes when they start twisting it all around and then they take away that uh, admiration for you and then 
they do exactly the opposite and they start accusing you of everything and you're a bad person and you don't comply with the rules that he sets up. So then suddenly you become the, the bad person that doesn't, you know, doesn't play by their games and they punish you for it. And he did that really well as well from the documentary. And another thing they do is they alienate you from your friends. And this is also exactly what he's done. He completely shut her off but from her friends, uh, her employees, her family. He literally hacked into her account and pretended to be her. And he took away all her access, her phone, etc. Like, there is nearly not enough emphasis in this documentary about that about him how he managed to do what he did and yes um as i was saying before i think a lot of people have a lack of sympathy towards salma maybe because of this whole dog immortality thing and i feel like the netflix documentary focused too much on that it doesn't matter what he promised her the fact was he knew that the dog was dear to her because she was lonely at that time when he found her, when he, they met. And dog, the dog, Leon, was the only thing that was there for her and was dear to her. And he knew that. And it was more just like selling her the dream and selling her, telling her that everything's going to be fine and, you know, we're going to be happy ever after with the dog <laughs> and she bought him for that and i don't think it's as silly as people think it is and if it was not a dog say for example it was her child and the child was sick because honestly the dog was as important to her as a child let's be honest and someone would come Let's imagine it happened to you with your kid and someone would come to you, your, your kid is sick, for example, and they would say, listen, I can heal him or her and it's going to be fine. And, you know, just trust me, I can make everything bad go away. You would believe him. It's, it's what they tell you what you want to hear. And faith and hope. They, they lash on to that. <laughs> and I, I, just, I just feel like it really, it really bothers me that this has not been highlighted enough in the documentary. So really, I just wanted to make this video because I had to get it off my chest and I, I think that it's not okay that we are, as a society, blaming the victim. That shouldn't be the case. And I just wanted to say to Salma, girl, if you're watching this, I'm sorry that this happened to you. And I just really hope that you can move on and find happiness in one way or another and know that it's nothing to do with intelligence or you know being stupid or being silly it could have happened to anyone i honestly believe that and the fact that people don't understand that upsets me Thank you so much for watching, guys. I, I know it was rambly, but I had to get it off my chest because it was really bothering me. I would love to know what you think. Have you watched the documentary? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What is your opinion on this whole topic? I would love to know. Thank you.